Welcome to Power Poppy. Today we're going to play with some fun distress oxides and we're also going to play with some vellum. So come join me in my scrap room and away we go. So we're going to start our creation with some watercolor paper. I've just got some Strathmore um, watercolor. 140 pound. We're going to use some picked raspberry, seedless preserves, and some wilted violet. Let's get around to making our background first. I'm going to start with picked raspberry. And we're just going to make a blended background. Some nice pinks and shades of purple. Because they're my favorite colors. And we're just going to randomly blend. We're going to start with our lightest color, which of course is our picked raspberry. And work in our purples. Next comes seedless preserves. And I'm looking on a fairly smooth blend as an end result. Once again, the oxides uh, blend really, really well. So, And we're going to bring in a little bit of brightness with our wilted violet. Increasing the color by adding more ink and then we'll go back with our blenders and just uh, blend our inks together. And of course blending your pinks and purples you'll just get another ultimate shade of a pinkish purple. So I'll just play in with my color. This is the fun part about making your own backgrounds. You can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> and you can blend them until you're happy with them. I'm just going to go one more time in with my uh, picked raspberry. Just to soften up some of the edges and that. There we go. Okay. On to the next step. So I have um, a, a spray bottle, but I'm not going to use it out of the spray bottle. I'm actually going to apply it to my little clear block and use a small uh, paintbrush. So I'm going to do that off to the side just because I don't want to get too much splatter on my paper. Okay, so I have a little bit of water pooling and I'm just going to flick. I find it gets smaller droplets. I've got some big ones that are falling off the back of my, but that's okay because that's on the side. And I'm going to try and go a few different directions because you can actually notice if you've got a directional pattern. So I'm letting them sit. to sit and pick up the ink and then I'm just going to use a piece of paper towel, blot them up. Nice. And just know that when your paper towel is wet you can pick up the uh, stuff with that too so just be aware. I'm going to put a few more just towards the bottom here and towards this one corner. Let them sit, draws up the ink into the water. There we go. Nice. And then uh, we're going to do our stamping and add it to our background. Way we go. So we're going to use some of our cabbage and kale images. I've got some vellum paper and I've got just a piece of scrap paper here. I've also got my anti-static tool, little bag, and some Versamark. So first I'm going to treat my vellum can get very sticky and staticky and it also I also treat my paper too so my embossing powder just uh, flakes off. I've put my vellum into my mini misty here because 
I want to make the best impression that I can with my stamp. I've got the large image, and then we're going to put two other images onto our vellum. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to close them, pick them up with my lid. Got my Versamark ink. I'm going to give them a good sticky bath. I'm going to make sure I get all the details. So this is where you're going to need a really fine detailed embossing powder. Press those images onto the vellum. I'm not sure how many I'm going to use, but I'm going to do three. And I've got a pretty good impression there. I'm just going to remove that. And I think we'll go with a detailed copper this time. I always label the tops of my jars so I can see them. And sprinkle across. Into our scrap piece of paper. Wow, they came out fantastic. Go, just give it a good quick shake. Look at that. Now I'm going to take them to my heat gun and I'll show you them in one more. Oh my goodness, that copper is so gorgeous. All right, I'm going to uh, quickly fussy cut them out and away with a card. Okay, I have fussy cut, cut out my cabbages and kales. I've got a top folding A2 size card ready to go. And I also die cut my uh, distress ink panel with a, just a stitched edge uh, die and we're going to put it like that. I wanted um, a white outline around that panel to set it off. I'm going to use my large cabbage image and then we're going to stamp a, a greeting to go across it and I'll show you how we're going to attach this in one second. So I've got the greeting from the, stamps, the same stamp set. I am so grateful for you. I've got some darker gray cardstock here. Let's treat that with some anti static powder. And we'll grab our Versamark. We're going to ink up our sentiment with our nice sticky ink. Give it a good press. Double check that everything is stamped appropriately. Yeah, we look pretty good. The U's a little bit high on this end, but you know, we'll go with it. Bring in my scrap paper and my detailed copper embossing powder. This stuff works amazing for sentiments. my trimmer and I'm going to trim it down into a strip. I'm going to first glue on our panel. I'm just going to use my large ATG gun. I'm going to give it a couple of extra strips of adhesive because oh, just in case there's any warp in the paper it's going to hold it down a little bit more securely to our card base centering that. Now I'm actually going to okay, figure out kind of where this is going to go and we're going to use our sentiment strip 
as our gluing piece. So I'm going to adhere this. I'm going to use my thinner ATG. Put adhesive just on the back of that strip. I'm going to put my strip across my cabbage and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to just add adhesive right behind that strip. So it's going to hide how this is attached to my card. And I'm going to carefully center it on the front and it's going to hold down that vellum piece. It's a great way to hide your adhesive because quite often it uh, actually shows. This is on a little bit crooked so we're going to fix it. And there you go. A really simple, simple, simple card and it went pretty fast. So I hope I've inspired you today to create with some distress inks and some vellum. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment below and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.